Uh, hello, everybody. It's um, who am I? Um, CEO Jimbo. Um, uh, I'm back with another story. This time, um, uh, maritime, um, uh, the Titanic. Um, and I've been working on this for a while. It's it's um, really though taken me almost all week to come up with the topic. Um, and then when I finally came up with the topic, I now I've kind of done some research, looked at Wikipedia and um, watched some videos, kind of refreshed me. Um, I've been working on this all along. Um, maybe like about six months ago, I watched a video on the um, uh, rescue mission um, to go pick up the you know, the survivors and so on. It was a good video. I think that's a half hour video or something like that. Anyway, um, here's where I'm at. I have to be careful not to um, hit the off button. Um, but um, uh, let's see, the Titanic British um, uh, White Star Line was a company um, sank 15 April 20. 1912. I think everybody knows the Titanic, um, famous movie and all that type of stuff. Um, I, I've um, kind of gone through the history of it and, and trying to pick out what I'm really interested in. And um, it has, in a nutshell, it's come out to be the radio um, uh, tra transmissions. They can't, they had a new radio telegraph um machine and there was a room for this in the ship and um, so on. There there were three um, ships in the series. Um, the, the, um, and this is my drawing of the Titanic here. The, the Titanic was the middle of three ships. They, there were uh, some sort of class, uh, class Olympic class vessels. Um, and um, the first one was actually called the Olympic. The second one was the Titanic. And the third one was the Britannia, Titanic, I believe it was. Um, and anyway, we all know what happened to the Titanic. Um, I guess the Britannic, it sounds like sunk also. I don't really know what happened to the, um, uh, the first one, other than it got into the same captain was running that one on its maiden voyage. And there was some sort of... Uh, problem with that I think that hit lines with it um, of another ship um, and anyway um, the, then the captain was really favored you know, after all this he went down with the ship and um, he was sort of commended for his um, bravery and and his actions and so forth and um, so on um, anyway um, again I'm interested in the radio um, technology here and especially how they were using it to communicate to the captain and the bridge of the ship about icebergs. There were ships ahead of the Titanic that were reporting that there were both icebergs and ice sheets um, um, and, and trying to get this report via um, uh, telegraph uh, Morse code to, to the operator in that room and then the person in the room was to relay the message to the captain and the and the flight and the um, uh, bridge crew um, anyway to make a long story short it sounds like they were ch charging passengers money to make um, communications to land like if you wanted to kind of say hi you know to your wife or your kids or something like that that are back on land you could do that but you'd have to pay them money so that guy was like really busy. It was, um, you know, um, people were taking him up on that offer and paying him money and they were working on that. And the guy sounds like maybe didn't find time or um, importance to, to run the, you know, the message up to the captain that there were icebergs. And I watched a video today on that and they were basically saying that um, icebergs were not a big problem back then, that they were sort of known to... Um, you know, they could work around them, you know, see them ahead of time and turn the ship to, to maneuver around them. And um, occasionally they would bump into them and just get a big dent on the front of the ship and it was not that big of a deal. So um, so anyway, that's sort of, sort of um, out of my scope of interest, um, but somebody else might be very interested in that. Um, on that same subject, this has kind of turned out to be a little humor. I didn't really mean this, but... Um, 
that they're talking about the construction of the Titanic and it, you know, um, how it was supposed to be sort of unsinkable. And there's sort of like a discrepancy in there because that they were basically saying that, um, you know, some people were saying it was the unsinkable ship. I think everybody knows that that's sort of common topic um, at parties or whatever. But there's also um, it, um, a thing about it being... Um, uh, uh, six of 16 compartments, um, four were said to be no big deal. So, I mean, that's kind of like a discrepancy between is this a sinkable ship or is this a semi, un, is it an unsinkable ship or a semi unsinkable ship? Where it's like, if you, you know, as long as you, um, keep, you know, to keep it down to just four, um, compartments that get breached, you, you'll be just fine. Um, they, I think in the aftermath of all this, you know, they found the ship and I guess they've kind of discovered that six of the 16 compartments got breached, which sank it. And if, if it was only four, they kind of think that maybe it wouldn't have sunk. Um, anyway, that, enough on that. Um, the, this ship took off um, on the 2nd of April was just a sea trial and so on. And they didn't do any testing. Apparently they didn't like go to New York and back, you know, with just a, you know, a select crowd or no one or whatever to kind of see how it ran or anything like that. It sounds like they just kind of um, took it from here to Southampton and just loaded up full of, you know, paying passengers and set sail with this captain who was um, experienced and, you know, in demand for doing maiden voyages. And that this was like at least a second made made in voyage. I think he'd done like several other ones too and so on. But anyway, went from Southampton to um, Cherbourg, France, and then um, from Cherbourg, France to Queensland, Ireland. And um, so anyway, it, it actually like left from Queensland to 375 miles south of Newfoundland and um, hit this iceberg at um, 11.40 p.m. on 14 April 1912. Um, and uh, anyway, and, and another ship came in like at three in the morning or so up from this way or something like that and scooped up the passengers and went back down. And he was commanded for his bravery you know, going in, you know, in the middle of the night into the ice sheets and iceberg area to, to scoop those people out of the water and so on. Anyway, um, to, to, um, to kind of get to the point now is um, um, they had this radio telegraph. It was called a radio telegraph. Um, uh, micro uh, nidgems or, or whatever. Um, and um, uh, what do I want to say here? Um, they were using it for collision um, um, avoidance, um, as, as I described earlier. So I just kind of sum up a little bit and, and so on. But um, they, they were really just doing that with crew um they 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 really had confidence the captain had confidence in his watch people and they were just watching um i guess with lights and binoculars and so on um um and and if they could you know see the 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 icebergs they would turn there was a, dis, a thing about the stopping of the vessel that there was a, a, a middle propeller and that if they stopped that then there was not as much flow over the rudder and so the rudder um, was unable to turn it away from the iceberg. Where, where uh, oddly, almost ironically, if they would have kept the engine running, the, the center propeller running, they may have had more rudder authority and have been able to turn. But um, anyway, that's kind of out of my scope. My scope is the collision avoidance, and it's back to the um, try to try to sum up here. Back to my ge geography gypsy scopes. So this is kind of a. Um, this is actually the marine version, sort of. If if it was like, if I had my real spinner on it, this is you can put it on the bridge of your ship, and um, you know, and spin it on the bridge of your ship and see what it comes up. It's kind of the plan. Here's a, a blank one that I haven't quite done, but a little bit neater construction, um, uh, origami box, and so on. Here's the aircraft version and so forth. But you, spin it and see what it comes up. Um, 
I roll the dice here. Let's say um, the ship is going from Belfast to Southampton. We spin the dice here, and it's two. So the condition, they would be in the status of not quite excellent, but pretty close on on this leg. And then let's see, they go from Southampton to this one. We'll see how the, what they would have been. The mindset would have been four. So things not as good. That's um, slightly below average as far as like condition goes. And then we'll see how what they would have on the another four. Um, so they're still in sort of like below average status here. And then the voyage here that was that would supposed to go all the way to New York City. See what they would have been sailing on three average, um, slightly above average. So um, uh, I, I, it's kind of meaningless, I think. But it's um, um, it, uh, oh, um, I'm, I'm trying to like kind of get this into like radio technology where this would actually pick up icebergs um, somehow. The icebergs actually like, you know, if the air is like flowing around the icebergs, it disturbs the air and causes sort of like a, almost a gravity wave type thing. And this might pick up the movement of the air and so on. There's, it's a little more complicated than that, but maybe not. Um, um, and uh, there's, there's some scientific articles and research that has been done on that, that almost anything, um, especially moving things um, tend to leave sort of a trail or a, um, like a vestigial um, mark like in, in the atmosphere because of the air mass, the, you know, especially like in a stable air mass. But um, even in an unstable one, there may be some sort of like ways to kind of pick up something out there, like an iceberg sticking up a little bit. Um, anyway, um, Hope you like it. Um, that's where I'm at. Um, oh, my, this was a bumper boat, by the way. Um, um, th this person sits right here. This is like a outboard motor. And I was just kind of having fun with this. This is like, you know, the, like the Titan Titanic. You got compartment one, two, three, four, five. Um, unsinkable boat versus the unsinkable boat. Um, um, and anyway, that that's the, after doing this, I kind of realized that I'm more interested in the radio um, collision avoidance aspect of this, and not so much the design of an unsinkable ship or the, you know, the the um, uh, st um, strength of the vessel. Um, anyway, hope you like this. Um, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Smash that thumbs up button. Um, I appreciate um, all of your uh, interest in this. Um, have a good day. Uh, 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 CEO Jimbo out. Have a good one. Thanks again.